Welcome to Metrology with Dr. Marv. Today we're going to take a brief look at measuring surface roughness. For this we'll use the totally red Zygon XVU NX2. It's a super low noise, super high resolution white light interferometer. I don't believe there's anything better available on the market when you want to analyze surface roughness on manufactured parts. Our first sample is a ground surface in alumina oxide which is characterized by a pretty rough surface finish. I would expect something in the range of 3 microns here. In the video you can now see me measure surface. The workflow of any optical measurement device is always pretty similar. Find the part, find a region of interest and then adapt illumination, magnification, measurement range in Z, but also the area you want to record. Zygo so has their own software to operate the interferometer which is equipped with kind of handy functions like find part, auto tilt, auto focus and auto illumination. And from how quickly I'm recording this voiceover, you can guess it's super fast and easy to use and I have to hurry along a little bit. After having recorded the first data set, I can see illumination is nice, data looks pretty complete. So off the screen I'm adjusting stitching parameters so we can get a bit larger area for doing cool metrology here but also so I can highlight some important concepts in surface roughness. We are currently stitching just four frames together. Typically one has a bit of overlap between the individual frames. In this case I choose a 20% overlap. This enables the software to align and match the dataset. Recording stitched areas is always a bit exciting. You don't see much happening and depending on the size of the stitch you're left with a bit of process time. And then, suddenly, the result appears on screen. It's a bit like magic, without knowing the outcome until it's there. We are recording a dataset here, which consists basically of three coordinates, X and Y, which are predetermined by our scan field, and also kinda arbitrary, but the real information is in the height. Every X, Y coordinate is attributed as that height, and because this is a white light interferometer with absurd precision. With this data, we are able to not only visualize the surface, but also do actual quantifiable measurements of parameters, such as surface roughness or functional parameters. For this, I've moved the dataset over to a software called MountainMap. This is the absolute gold standard if you want to understand what you're doing with surface data. I take you through a typical workflow. If we take a look at the 3D visualized data, you can see some curvature, some longer wavelength form deviation, which is called waviness, but also micro roughness from measurement noise. Our goal will be to select and filter the data so we arrive at a usable data set for surface roughness. This is based a lot on the standards for aerial surface measurements such as ISO 25178. My focus here is to limit the frequency range of the surface to the wavelengths of interest, namely the SL limited surface. For this we first need to remove the shape of the part called form. A form removal operator uses a third degree polynomial. By this the curvature is calculated and all points are adjusted in their height by this deviation from the mean plane. The result is the same data set just very flat. It's a low degree polynomial because at this point we just want to remove the shape deviation not filter any roughness. Our next step will remove these outliers you can see here. For this, we're going to apply a threshold. A threshold basically cuts off something from the data. We're going to take a minuscule amount here, cutting off the uppermost and lowermost 0.1%. Because we cut off some areas, we are now left with some voids. To have a nicer visualization, we're going to have the software fill these areas of non-measured points. It doesn't really change anything on the result as a smooth shape is chosen to fill these and I've limited to less than 50 points but we'll make it easier to look at profiles later. With this flat, even, cleaned up surface, we can now calculate some surface parameters, such as SA, the arithmetic surface roughness, or SQ, which is the RMS of the surface roughness. I'm also including some functional parameters, such as SMR, which is the material ratio. The resulting surface shows a surface roughness SA of 2.79 micrometer, so pretty much what I expected. I prefer to use aerial surface parameters as they are not dependent on the measurement direction and more robust, which kind of means more honest than line profile surface roughness. To show you the difference, we are extracting two profiles here. 
a north-south and an east-west profile. Besides not having the standardized length, you will see a massive difference in the resulting roughness. A roughness parameter such as RA will always have a filter and one key takeaway from this video should be that this filter has a massive influence on the resulting roughness value. To better visualize this, we're going to look at the result of the filter for different values. The idea here is to remove the waviness, for example resulting from guide wave wobble. Here the red line shows the effect of the filter. You can see that at small cutoffs we are filtering away most of the profile, which would improve the surface roughness value drastically, but not be really honest. Um, to maybe show it directly here in the filter, if for example we change the setting from 0.8 to 0.08, our roughness more than halves, RA 1.3. If we go even further to 8 microns filter, it's now 0.13 micrometers, which would be a spectacular result for alumina oxide. I'm resetting the filters to a more realistic value of 0.8 millimeters here. Line surface roughness is also super dependent on the direction. The ISO standard quite clearly states that you have to measure perpendicular to your step over direction. Here, this would be the north-south profile. The not only much shorter east-west profile doesn't pick up on the kinematic surface roughness resulting from the step over. I'm arranging the two profiles down below here so we can compare the RA values. And you can see on the short profile we have 2.4 micrometers whereas on the long profile we have 2.9. This is a difference of 20%, so not really a very robust measurement if you always need to know and align the direction of your profile. Maybe shows why I like RL surface parameters so much. For our next part, we're gonna take a look at a diamond turned piece of aluminum made on a German manufacturer diamond lathe. I did this piece about two years ago and have so far missed equipment that can reliably measure something this specular and smooth. The workflow is pretty identical. Find the surface, tilt the part so it's parallel to your image plane, adjust focus and light. I'm also switching to a higher resolution objective lens, a 50 times magnification NA0.551. To rough focus the part, I'm using the joystick to jog down until the part is roughly there. This is always a little bit of a tricky situation because you kind of don't want to run into the part. As it comes into focus, we can see in the fringe pattern that some alignment needs to be done. This can be corrected via the motorized tip tilt sable that it's parallel to the surface. Frankly speaking, I'm in love with this feature. It's so neat. After quickly focusing the part again via the autofocus function, we can see the effect of the adjustment. The amount of fringes visible are massively reduced. This is also a nice statement. I am now switching to the 50 times objective lens and once again off screen, sorry about that, uh, setting up a stitching overview. Back in Mountains Map, we basically go through the same process chain. So first we need to remove form, as this is a very flat part, we are just removing the tilt, so we use a polynomial of the second degree. Then we are cutting off some outliers, filling up the non-measured points once again, using a smooth shape calculated from the neighbors. And we are pretty much immediately able to calculate surface roughness again. In the sample, you can actually see the step over from the diamond, or maybe more the turning direction. It's the diagonal lines going from lower right to upper left corner. And the ISO 25178 actually includes spatial parameters. And these spatial parameters are, for example, STR which is the stratified surface ratio, so how homogeneous your surface is, but also STD, your texture direction. 
And you can see here that in the reference of zero degrees, which would be the x-axis, our major surface direction is 101 degrees. This is really cool because you kind of don't really need to then tell people it's going from left to right or from north to south. You just tell them STD is 101.3 degrees. Change it, machine shop. Maybe we should be very glad that most metrology departments have no clue what these parameters are. So they're not telling us how to operate the machines. Surface roughness on this part is SA 7 nanometers and SQ 10 nanometers. For our last part, I have something pretty cool. It's a stainless steel part. And the roughness on this one is kind of pushing most instruments to their limits. Not this one though. The workflow on this part is identical. Find the part surface, look for an area where there is no dirt. Then you just lightning, focus, and after you find your part, you switch to a larger magnification to get more surface detail. And then as a final step, you tilt the sample so it's parallel to the image plane again. After setting everything up just correctly, it's time to switch to the highest magnification lens. Once again, a stitching field is set up. As we've seen before, a major source of too good measurements, untrue too good measurements, comes from too small of a sampling area. This is a huge issue when people try to show surface roughness measurements recorded via atomic force microscopy, because it's such a small sampled area that it's typically not correct and not representative of the actual surface roughness. And I would also say that because of the, f the filter size kind of depends on the area you're scanning. Um, so if you, for example, record 400 microns, your filter can't be 400 microns. It always needs to be less, otherwise the filter is not working. Um, having a very small area also requires a very small filter. And this means your surface roughness is way too good. It's quite a bit of data, so stitching takes a small amount of time. And then you can see that we immediately hit like one nanometer surface roughness here. But maybe let's switch over to Mountain's map and take a closer look at the data. The resulting surface roughness, calculated in a similar way than before, shows a very nice result. Surface roughness SA is about one nanometer, a more than respectable result, considering this part was made on a milling machine and is hardened stainless steel at 54 HRC. Thanks for coming along on this short, very short, read and shallow dive into surface metrology. Would you be interested in learning more? Let me know in the comments. I'm only left with saying Auf Wiedersehen and until next time.